Warning, huge discount code coming. New content type dedicated towards educating you information vultures out there. It's going to be sick. Let's get to it. That's right. We're G-Man himself and we can't see the cards of the other players. Now you can see how good you are. Instead of being a chat pro where you can see everyone's cards, you can actually see how your thought process lines up with Garrett himself. So we see a limp from the hijack from a recreational player. I assume we see a 5x from a recreational player. I'm pretty sure. And we're on the button with pocket haces. Nice. Now, obviously, we're going to be 3-betting here. If anyone thinks we've got to be trapping, god damn it, you should probably watch some other video. This is going to be a bit too high level for you. But the question is, what size do we go? Do we go the same size with all of our hands? I fucking hope not, because our hands are going to play differently. We're more incentivized to play heads up with Ace-King than we are with Aces. We're more incentivized to get more folds with Ace-King than we are with Aces. And as long as we can do it in a way that isn't going to be too transparent, we can get away with changing up our race sizes loads and loads and loads and loads, depending on what kind of hand we have. So I'd probably say something around 7, 7 half, 8k here it makes a lot of sense. Generally you want to be going smaller the, the shallower stack you are and the, the larger the deeper stack you are. So we want to be building a lot up a lot of pots. There's going to be a lot of incentive for suited hands, pocket pairs, broadways to be calling us. And judging by what I've seen from these high, high stakes hands, it, you, you're going to end up going multi-way a lot of the time anyway. You don't want to go too big, don't want to give away the, the strength of your hands, you don't want to make it super hard for you to be bluffing in the future, and it'll be disastrous if somebody folds something like Queen 10 off where they would have otherwise called. So I'm liking 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5k. Eight we see a peel out small blind, pretty dicey. Love to see live poker how it's playing these days. And we see the cutoff call. The cutoff could have any number of suited hands. The small blind's going to have a lot of like kind of strong pocket pairs, suited broadways, maybe some like ace queen. Uh, or he could be a whale and he could just be punting around with anything. It's really hard to say. People are being crazy on these high stakes poker hands. We're going to get an idea of how people play the more we watch these kind of things. Seven, six, deuce, two diamonds. We do not have the ace of diamonds, relevant for a couple of reasons. Checks to us, what do we do? What do we do and why? Remember, we have G-Man's image. We do not have our own image. I know most of you are sitting at home being like, well, uh, people wouldn't expect me to bluff this, so I can't bet too big. We're G-Man right now. We've been shown that we can show down some damn big hands and some damn shitty hands, so we're pretty bad. Balanced, at least in their eyes. I would say with aces with no diamonds specifically we probably want to be going real big We're gonna be getting called by any pair on the flop There's no way somebody calls something like eight six suit and it falls to one bet as long as there's any reasonable size We're gonna be get, getting called by gut shots by open enders by flush draws Maybe even some floats. So I'm probably gonna be sizing up maybe around 18k here. What about you? D-Man goes 12k. I said it's a little on the small sides, but I'm sure he's got his reasons Perhaps he thinks he can get one call by something like pocket five Perhaps he thinks he might get floated by something like ace queen ace king from the small blinds You never know what's in his mind and there's no correct answer personally I think that just because of the exponential increase of the pot sizes on flop turn river I think that it's better to just size up on the flop and not worry so much about those mediocre hands and try and just get maximum value against these flush draws seven eights a seven kind of hands as played 48k in the pot What are we gonna do on the eight turn? Of course, there's one type of hand that we have to be worrying about here and, and kind of dictating our strategy around. And what is that type of hand? Yes, you guessed it. Pause the video if you haven't. Pair and straight draw type of hands. Now, of course, he can have other things. He can have combo draws with a flush draw as well as a straight draw. He can have nut flush draws. He can have two pairs. He can have straights. He might be able to have sets, although I'd say it's more likely he would raise them on the flop. So what are we going to be doing and why? A little strategy, a little tidbit that I like to do in these kind of situations. I like to better size that his parent straight draws are going to call, but his value hands, the, like his two pairs and things like that, are going to be raising almost all the time. So if you go pot here, there's a good chance that if he has a straight, if he has a set, he might just decide to slow play because it looks like he's going to get it all in on the river. So I'd like to go around about maybe 60% pot here, 50% pot here. Make sure we're still getting tons of value out of his pair and straight draws, but make sure that if he does have a value hand, we can actually get away from it very likely. Now, of course, if he's a crazy, crazy whale that's going to be bluffing lows, perhaps we can't fold our hand. But I'd say about 95% of people aren't going to be capable of bluffing here. So I really like betting and then probably going for some small value, maybe some big value, depending on what the river is on the river. Okay, we've, we've decided to check. I've got to be honest, G-Man is a phenomenal poker player. I fucking hate this one. I hate the check. Maybe he picked up something, maybe he had a tell, maybe he had his reasons. I just think there's too many combinations of pair and straight draws when he's peeled pre-flop and he has such a wide range as well when he's closing the action. There's just going to be countless combinations of it. There's going to be something like pocket nines, pocket fives, seven five suited, six five suited, eight nine suited, ten eight suited, ten seven suited, ten six suited. 
ace nine of diamonds, ace ten of diamonds, ace jack. There's just so many hands that we can get value from. And if he does have a value hand, perhaps we can just fold to a raise on the turns. I really, really don't like this. But okay, as played, turn is a king. What are we going to do when he checks us? We have to assume that a decent percentage of the time, if he has a value hand, he's going to be betting. Of course, sometimes he's going to be checking to check raise, but that's la vie, that's going to happen. We have to go for value here. What size are we going to go? We want to make it look bluffy. We have G-Man's image. Personally, I like a size of around 45k. Uh, it actually, the larger you go, it's a little interesting tidbit here again, the larger you go, the easier it is to then fold to a raise because people are much more likely to bluff smaller sizes than they are bigger sizes. Now, of course, we are going to be targeting those one pair hands. Perhaps we think that he might be more likely to pay with the kind of pocket fives, pocket nines kind of hands if we bet something like 25k, 30k. But personally, I like to polarize here, represent a bluff, represent the old ace 10, represent the old ace 3 or whatever it's going to be, and just go pot size bet, maybe something like 50k, maybe something like 55k. I think any bigger than that, we start getting way too many folds. But I can see arguments for going absolutely huge. I can see some arguments for going something like 30k. And this is one of the situations, if a poker player tells you that there is a definite answer and that something is good and something is bad, they're talking out of their ass. If their solver says something that, you know, or you have to go this size to bounce because you have this many bluffs, fucking fuck GTO. This situation's never going to come up again. You're not playing against a person that's paying attention to your tendencies, at least not enough that you have to be balancing. Play it in a vacuum. Play it how you think. What size did you go? Pause, think about it. Let's see what G-Man does. G-Man bets 30k, gets the call. Never know if you've got max value. Probably not because you, the, the recreational player probably would have called at least 30k on the turn. But the specific hold they had 10-7 suited. Holy shit. Uh, so I hope you like this kind of content. I've noticed that people have shortening attention spans over the days. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you prefer a slower type of content. But I'm going to be making a bunch of these and we're going to be playing in the shoes of all of the top high stakes poker players that you know and love. If you like the way I teach poker, I have plenty more content. I go in so much more depth than I just did now. Find it on charliecarroll.com and for the next week, you can get a 35% discount of any of my products using the code FUCK. GTO, all capitals, no space. Peace and love.